You're watching Risk SA TV. This is the end of the second day of the PSG Annual Conference 2015 at uh, Sun City. I'm joined now by Ronald King, Head of Technical Support for PSG Wealth. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, just picking up on the themes of the day and the panel discussion from today, uh, you spoke about the retail distribution review and the changes that are likely to be coming in. Um, and you spoke about the fact that, in a way, for PSG, this is going to impact you a little bit differently than it will for many of your competitors. You spoke about the fact that, for some companies, retail distribution is just one part of their business, where for PSG it is the business. Uh, just uh, could your commentary on that. No, that is correct. Um, retail distribution review is about retail distribution. And in the start of the document, they actually exclude your EB, your, your, your um, corporate services, and they also exclude your investment management services. Together with that, um, stockbroking is managed under the Financial Markets Act, which they believe is not affected. However, within PSG, we've gelled all of this together because most of our clients' needs require all of these services to be provided to them. So a lot of what we do include all of this. Um, also, the RDR every now and then references back to a lot of this, which makes it very, very difficult, excluding it, but then including it by reference. Within PSG, we have such a um, multifaceted service that we try and provide to our clients. We try to be the, the be-all and end-all for all our clients, which means that all of these things are integrated. And one of the requirements of RDR is to kind of split each and every one of these units out. And, and there's a good reason for it from the RDR side. So we understand that they want clients to see each and every part and what they pay for each and every part of this. But within PSG, with, with our integrated approach, which is to the benefit of our clients because you save costs and stuff, this creates a bit of a problem. For example, we will have financial planners that manage your financial plan, manage your unit trusts, and then refer your business to a portfolio manager that manages your share portfolio. Now, this will immediately be impacted by a referral agreement, which at this stage is something that's clear that there is, um, the regulator is not very happy about. They don't like these um, referral agreements and everything. Another specific um, prohibition in the um, RDR is the um, outsourcing of investment management services. Now, that can be seen as an outsourcing of an investment management service because I'm not managing your share portfolio. I'm outsourcing it to someone else, albeit within the same company. So there are little nuances that is extremely important in our lives. Um, we have managed our business. Each and every office is an employee of PSG, but we've built it very similar to a franchise. Each practice manage their own finances, they manage their own profitability, they manage their own success. And to make that work very well, we've built it in a heuristic representative style. So each and every one of our um, offices is a heuristic representative. Now, that is outlawed because of things that other people have done, mainly with the property syndications. Now, this is something that might be re um, important for one company, the referral business might be important to another, how shares are done is not important for most people because very few of the FSPs out there provide share services. For us, all of these are integrated and we need to look at all of these 55 proposals and not just look at it specifically for what they intended it to be, but also go out and say, listen here, how is this going to impact on the other businesses and can it have a negative impact that they haven't thought about? Yes, yeah, so that was leading me into my next question exactly, that, that, that you spoke about the uncertainties and the kind of potential unintended consequences. What, uh, I mean, obviously if they're unintended, it's a bit hard to predict, but what are you particularly concerned about and how are you sort of proactively managing that? Well, um, we've given a few examples to the regulator at, at, at this stage, and when we uh, discussed with them, and I must say the regulator has been very good at this, um, they've listened, they have taken notes, they've said, but this is not the intention, and, and the way that we hope it will be addressed is in the particular standards that are created. But for example, at this stage, one of the intentions is to min limit churning um, in, in um, life insurance policies. Because you have a financial planner that moves from one company to another and then churns the whole risk book from that old company to the new one. And they are trying to prohibit that by taking away commission 
on new replacement policies. Now, we showed to them that one of the requirements is that that new policy must, because of the fact that there's no commission on it, be cheaper. Being cheaper, it is to my client's best, um, it's, it's more suitable for my client to have that product. So in effect, it is now better for me to churn policies than in the past because the second policy is going to be cheaper. And I then just charge him my advice fee on top. So instead of um, replacing or stopping churn, this is probably going to make, make churn even more alive out there because now I have a good suitability reason to churn the policy. Um, one of the things, for example, is that they say that you can only get information from a product supplier if you know that specific product. Our concern is that insurance companies are going to use that to block us from getting information. So there's a number of these issues that, that it's going to depend on the specific wording, whether the intention of the regulator is going to come through or whether it's going to be a prohibition on their focus on level playing fields, because we agree with them. If they can get level playing fields out of RDR, it would be great. Francois said that he felt that confident that uh, PSG Consult is in a good place to handle whatever is going to come out of RDR. Would you agree with that? Oh, definitely. Um, we've been fortunate enough that we are a young company, so we do not have a legacy with us. But we've also, from the start, looked at how it was playing out in, in, in FOFA in Australia and RDR in the UK. And a lot of the things that we've implemented over the past few years have been focused towards RDR already. And, and, and that probably puts us in front of the pack. Um, we've also, from the start, decided to take a very, very interactive stance with the regulator. And I've been uh, a director of the Financial Planning Institute for the past six years, so we've been playing a very important role there, and also with the Financial Intermediaries Association. So we're trying, as PSG, to influence the industry to the better of ourselves, but also to the industry as a whole and to our clients in the end. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your time, Ronald.